Hi, I'm Scott at ediblemusic.com. One of the key characteristics of a great mix is space, not just within the mix itself, but in the way that it seems to come out of the speakers and share the space of your listener. You've had that experience, I'm sure. You're listening to a great song, you're listening to a great mix, and it seems as though it pushes out of the speakers and envelopes you in the space that the song is occurring in. So I want to show you how to do that using some delays today. This is one of those things that is so important to your mixes, no matter the genre, no matter the song style that you're working on, you'll want to use it on all of your mixes because it really helps to have a profound effect on the way that space is felt in the listener. I'm going to show you how to do it on a pop song here, and I'll let it play for a bit while I get the delays set up. Okay, so you'll want to set up a few return channels and put a delay on each of those. This is a step that would come after doing some balancing and some EQ and some compression so that you've already got the mix in a good spot. When I talk about this in the five day foundation that I teach, this would come as around step four. So there will be some things that you want to accomplish first before you get here, but when you do, just choose any delay that you want. There's no special reasoning behind the ones that I'm choosing. I'm gonna use three different delay plugins simply for the sake of variety. I'm gonna set up three here, one for the drums and percussion, one for the instruments, and the other for the vocals. Let's start with the drums. I'll solo it. That's just the delay, and I'll solo it with the percussion as well. So that sounds wacky, right? But as you bring the delay, as you bring the delay nearer, all the way down, way down, way down, way down. That sounds pretty good. So it sounded really weird, of course, when it was a long delay, but as you bring a delay up closer and closer, it will sound to your listener as though it's part of the actual drum kit. That's the key that we want to work with here. I'll show you how it sounds even closer. And then it starts getting a little strange. So we'll bring it back up. And I'll bring it up nice and easy. Okay, so I'm only bringing it up enough so that you can feel it underneath the drums. It's not something that the listener of your mixes will be able to perceive. This isn't a very dramatic delay effect, but it's something that will have the, the really profound result of positioning the, these drums to start 
within a particular space. And then as we do that with the other sections as well, you'll get a sense of separation and a sense of space between them. But they won't feel as though they're being overpowered by the delay effects. These are just creating almost like a, I don't know, like a sonic pedestal for them to sit on. And then that will create some distinction between the different sections that we're going to send a delay to. Okay, here it is without. Now I'll ease it in. I'll exaggerate it actually as well. See, when you have it up loud like that, it starts to position the delay in front of the program element. That's not really what you want to do here. You want it to be positioned sort of behind and, and beneath it. So I'll pull that volume down again. Okay, we'll add it to the vocals too. Okay, so here it is without them, and I'll turn them on and off for a bit. And what I want you to notice is how the mix begins to come towards you and feel as though it's sort of wrapping around you and it owns this sonic space that the song is being performed in. Check this out. subtle, right? But it's one of those things where you think, oh, there's just something about that. And as the mixing engineer, you know how to get that done now. So the way that I've set this up is with three sections. You can get as um, intricate as you want with this by selecting different delays for different instruments. I've chosen all of the instruments and sent those to one delay, but this song has strings and piano and synths, and you could send each of those to their own delays and position them in a way so that they occupy a certain space within the mix and continue to contribute to that overall sense of space as well. Another thing that you can do is adjust the tone of the delays. And I think that that would be useful here, actually, so let's do that. And I'll exaggerate the percussion delay for now while I adjust these tone controls. So while I adjust the high-pass filter, listen to the low end of the percussion and see how that changes.
right? The drums kind of feel a little more bouncy now. And let's adjust the tone on the other ones as well. What we can try is to have the instruments in the back end, the drums and the percussion, to have a darker delay, and then sort of a medium tone in the middle for the instruments, and then a brighter tone for the vocals. Let's see how that works. But here as well, you'll it's very slight, but you can notice how the overall tone of the instrument seems to change as we change the, the tone of the delay. So if you're having some, some trouble with separation between elements, you can use a delay that's brighter than the program element, and that will have the effect of making that element feel or sound as though it is brighter. And then you can do the opposite with the program element that's clashing it and make it a little bit darker and you can adjust the delays in that sense too. Pretty good, right? And this is not, as you saw, a very complicated technique. You can make it as simple or as intricate as you want. You can use just a couple of delays or three of them as I did here, or you can set them up for each of the instruments or instrument groups that you're working with. And then you can create some dimension between them within the space of the mix, but it will also help the song to push towards its listener. And so it will give the listeners of your mix a real sense of the excitement of the song that they're listening to. Try it out, have fun. <laughs> 